Meet Australia's largest and toughest lizard. Weighing in at around 33 pounds and measuring over nine feet long, the Parenti is the lizard king. A formidable apex predator that few animals dare to tangle with. This large male is a notorious desert stalker. And he's hungry. He's using his highly tuned senses to forage in the grass. His eyes are shaded from the sun and sensitive to the slightest of movements. Licking the air with his tongue, he tastes the faint chemical trace of prey. Nothing much escapes his attention. Most of the time, he makes do with small rodents. Out here in Australia's barren interior, potential meals are few and far between. So he's not above scavenging. But such a big, active hunter sometimes needs a more substantial meal. A parenti of his size will actively hunt wombats and even lone dingoes. Most reptiles wouldn't even dream of taking on a red kangaroo. But the parenti isn't most reptiles. He can do something other lizards can't. Parentes can run and breathe at the same time. He has a large breathing tube and strong neck muscles that act like bellows to keep him well oxygenated, even at high speed. The Parenti is one of the fastest of all reptiles. He can maintain speeds of around 25 miles an hour for more than half a mile, making him a very efficient endurance hunter. Even so, a kangaroo is no easy target. His best chance is to launch a surprise attack. He focuses on the weakest and most vulnerable within the mob. This predator's festering mouth oozes more than drool. It's recently been discovered that the bite of the parenti is venomous. Anticoagulants contained within the venom induce a collapse in blood pressure and dizziness soon subdues the victim. Selecting an unwary target, his approach is silent. But the desert community is always alert to stalkers. The chase is on. A contest of speed and agility. On the open plain, the kangaroo would be much faster. But while navigating the low desert scrub, it struggles to reach top speed.
But ultimately, the parenting is outclassed. There's little shame in being outrun by this iconic Australian sprinter. But the Parenti turns his attention to a very different challenge. He's crossed paths with the recently fed Mulga snake. As one of the most venomous snakes on the planet, the Mulga is a real threat to most reptiles. But the Parenti stands his ground. The snake poses little threat to him. He's too big. And thanks to eons of co-evolution, Parentes have also developed a resistance to snake venom. So it's the Mulga snake that finds itself in peril. And the Parenti doesn't hesitate. It's a sizeable meal that will provide this unscrupulous predator with enough energy to stalk his next victim. Dragons have been the stuff of legend for centuries upon centuries. But you might be amazed to know they're real. Well, maybe not in the way we've been led to believe, but these monsters from Indonesia truly do justice to their name. The Komodo Dragon. 10 feet long and 300 pounds of might and ferocity. Of the monitor lizard family, they're the largest remaining lizards on the planet. These guys were dubbed dragons around the time they were discovered in 1910. Explorers were told of a dragon-like creature terrorizing the Indonesian island of Komodo. And well, they lived up to the hype. They look like a dragon. Big shoulders, big stocky neck, long sleek head. They have that long, like kind of like vultures, long slender head so that they can get inside of bodies, you know, eat the carrion, get the meat, rip it out. Really sharp claws used for digging, ripping meat off the bones. Very long, powerful tail. They use that in combat. Also to get away from predators, you know, they have extremely strong whipping power and they're just very stocky, made for all terrain animals. All terrain indeed. <laughs> they're built like Jeeps and they're brutal to tangle with. As massive as these dragons are, they can take down even bigger animals when they've got an appetite. Deer, water buffalo, and ooh, even humans. They tend to hunt solo, but they've been known to team up if a buffet-sized dinner is on the table. They can run very fast in short bursts, up to 11, 12 miles an hour, you know, on a sprint, but they can't sustain that very long. So what they would do is usually they would kind of hide out, wait, you know, by a bush, by a tree. When prey would come through, they usually grab it low by the feet, you know, kind of drag it down. Yep, they're fast, they're stealthy, they're patient. And if they catch you, they're straight up nasty. For a long time, it was widely believed that Komodo dragons had a venomous bite that did the damage. But the grisly truth is, their victims die of blood loss. Now, how they find their prey? Well, it all begins with that long, forked tongue. As it flicks in and out of their mouths, the Komodo collects air and deposits it on the receptors of the roof of their mouths. That allows them to pick up the scent of prey from up to five miles away. Hmm, a sophisticated tongue. And once they're ready to munch, they eat every last bite. And that includes hair, hooves, horns, and bone. Yet yeah, they waste nothing. They're very opportunistic, so whenever they do make a kill, they do find some food, they can eat up to 80% of their total body weight in one sitting, and then they may not be able to eat again for another week or two, um, depending on when they can get their next meal. So they basically stuff themselves as much as they can on everything they can, why they can, and then um, from there, they move on to the next meal. For thousands of years, they've been dominating life on the islands of Indonesia. Run into one of these guys by mistake, and you'll find out firsthand why they're worthy of the name Dragon. <laughs>